Congress. Joining me now, James Bazan, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Defense. He's in the peg tonight. Paul Dewar of the, uh, is the uh, NDP's Foreign Affairs critic. He is with me here in Ottawa. And back for double duty in Vancouver is Joyce Murray, the Liberals' defense critic. Uh, Mr. Bazan, let, let me start with the cyber attack, and, I, and I'll get to the uh, Yarmouk situation, which is horrific. Hackers took control of this French uh, uh, network, TV5, bringing down the website, the social media. Look at this stuff. Uh, how sufficient are the protections in place to stop this from happening in Canada? Well, as you know, Evan, we announced uh, $245 million into cybersecurity. Uh, it's the first government in Canadian history to actually uh, set up a, an overall national uh, program and plan to ensure that we can protect ourselves. Uh, CSEC, of course, is, is the organization that, that is responsible for, for dealing with uh, a lot of this cybersecurity. And this, again, just goes to the point to show that uh, ISIL is extremely sophisticated. They have the ability to inspire those that, that are quite knowledgeable in computer systems and software systems that they're able to take control of the uh, social media sites of, of the uh, television station in France. All right, just, just real quick, how concerned are you that this kind of thing could happen, a cyber attack here in Canada? Well, we've faced cyber attacks in the past from, from other sources, uh, so uh, we, ex we were expecting this, and, uh, but we are prepared and, and uh, we'll deal with this as uh, this continues to evolve. How, has there ever been an attempt by ISIS for a cyber attack here in Canada? I couldn't speak to that uh, uh, as, as fact, uh, but I, I know that we are concerned uh, because of what they've been able to do already uh, through social media, what they've done uh, in their sophistication, in, in, in their technology, and, and the way they've been promoting their message. So it's not at all a surprise to us that they've been able to hack in to uh, a television station in France. This is a massive uh, cyber attack. What message yeah. does it send for you about the sophistication of uh, this ISIS group or mm -hmm. a group associated with ISIS, Mr. Deere? Well, we're seeing this uh, with ISIS, but we're seeing that uh, generally speaking with uh, other groups. Uh, one of the things I want to bring back to what uh, James just said, though, is that you know, the government's been criticized for their lack of investment on cybersecurity, and it was by the Auditor General. We've had attacks 2014, 2011. Uh, yeah, we National know, Research Council. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we at one point, we had public servants having to go to cafes here in Ottawa because their, their workplace wasn't secure. So, I, you know, the, the amount that was uh, mentioned by James is over seven years. Uh, what we need to do is get hold of this right now and it's not just about CSEC. CSEC has a certain job to intercept and to look at the noise if the traffic that's going on uh, amongst those who are involved or threats of terrorists. What we're talking about here is the actual protection of our assets here so it's a bit of a different equation. I think we need to do a lot more and it's a wake-up call for everyone. Yeah I think it's 240 odd million dollars and the Auditor Seven General years. had said they need more quicker on that. Joyce Murray, what, what's your take on the message this sends about the sophistication of ISIS and the vulnerability of Canada? It, it's a wake-up call. I mean, we've been being alerted for a number of years that uh, cyber attack and cyber warfare is the emerging major concern that to countries, not just Canada, but the United States and others, are really not prepared for properly and don't have a, a holistic strategy in which uh, academics and the business community and uh, our, our security agencies like CSE and governments and provincial governments are working together uh, and mapping out a set of things that need to be done to, to secure our networks and, and so secure our infrastructure in our country. So I think this is a reminder uh, that it's time to really take this seriously and do a, a thoughtful, uh, integrated approach to cyber defense of Canada. Now, now as Canadian jets uh, for the first time bomb inside Syria, uh, ISIS targets, ISIS has now seized this Palestinian refugee camp. It's near Damascus. It's called Yarmouk. Now, let me just give you the background. There are tens of thousands of people are living now in, it is absolute squalor there. People are literally starving to death. The security situation is tenuous to say the least. And this is, the camp is sort of protected by the UN refugee agency, it's called UNRWA. But Canada recently cut funding to UNRWA, the agency tasked with protecting the Palestinian refugees. Earlier today, I spoke with Christopher Gunnis. He's the head of the United Nations Relief and works agency for Palestinian refugees in the Near East. He was in Jerusalem. Let me show you what he had to say to me about the situation in Canada. Your organization is facing a, a massive cash crisis, obviously a crunch. The Canadian government has cancelled, it's withdrew $30 million of funding from UNRWA. What, what impacted the loss of $30 million from Canada and what explanation did your group have for that withdrawal? 
Well, it is a huge, huge crisis for UNRWA. We are facing a structural deficit in our core programming of over $100 million. And it's not just our core programming that's suffering. Our emergency programming um, is suffering inordinately. So, for example, in Syria, even before this appalling crisis in Yarmouk, we were having to scale back on our cash assistance because so many of our installations have been so badly destroyed and damaged by the conflict. It's mainly cash that we hand out. Now, last year, we had so little funds, we were reduced to handing out 60 cents per refugee per day. Now, Imagine what it's like living on 60 cents a day. And that is a direct result of the financial crisis that UNRWA is being put through. Why did Canada withdraw that $30 million? What explanation did they give you? Well, we didn't really get an explanation. We just found out one day that the cheque hadn't arrived. But if you look at the Canadian CEDARS website, the development fund in Canada um, for why they want to give aid, UNRWA really fits the bill. It's about food security, it's about hope and about development for the next generation. And that really is what UNRWA is about. We educate half a million children in the Arab states and territories around okay. Israel. We bring primary health care. And as you can see from the work that we're doing in Yarmouk, we are bringing desperately needed emergency services to some of the most embattled and disadvantaged communities in the Middle East. What a great shame that Canada chose to cut funding for all of that. James Bazant, can you tell us, given the situation there, why did Canada cut that $30 million from UNRWA? Well, first of all, we've got to remember, we haven't funded UNRWA since uh, 2012, and core funding we haven't provided since 2009. The last funding we did in 2012 was an emergency food situation. And I should mention that you know so we, are, we, we have other partners that we work with, uh, including the World Food Program, we're the third largest donor. Uh, so there's more organizations than just UNRWA. And so, the, so we work with, with uh, a number of partners that we can uh, feel comfortable that they are getting the resources where they're supposed to be. And uh, you know, we have, as has been mentioned before, uh, we are one of the largest donors in the region, over $700 million in Syria and Iraq. Uh, we have provided uh, food to, to, to over 4 million Syrians, uh, we, 16 million with clean drinking water. So you know, we are working uh, with organizations to, to, to deliver aid. But these and, are and, Palestinian, and, I, mean, I mean, we're spending yeah, half a billion what, dollars uh, uh, on, the, on the military mission. Here's Palestinian refugees. Canada used to fund them, and I know the funding stopped in 2012, but they don't have an explanation for it. Now they're at the mercy of ISIS in there, and we understand even barrel bombs, these horrific bombs from the Assad regime. These are Palestinian refugees. The UN is in there. They want some money. Why not? You know, obviously the organizations that, that the government is choosing to support are not helping these particular people. Why not these people? Well, I'd say that right now the situation around Damascus, uh, especially with uh, the barrel bombs, with ISIL and others fighting uh, on the streets, uh, we, we, the, you know, you can't really deliver any aid uh, when you don't have security. Uh, so we're going to continue as we, point, as we just did. Look at it as we just did. We have to make sure we degrade ISIL and, and, and its capabilities. They're taking more territory in Syria. That's one of the reasons why Parliament decided to extend the mission, expand the mission uh, into Syria. And uh, so the the, the uh, bombings that happened yesterday uh, helped degrade the overall capabilities of ISIL uh, and, and the well, major garrison that they wants have. To jump in. Well, like, James is, you know, this. I guess he's displaying how wrong-headed this government is when it comes to dealing with the situation there. Look, first of all, he hasn't explained why we defunded UNRWA. I'll tell you why. Because the Palestinians actually went forward and put an application to become uh, observers of the UN. And this was a b not punishment. All. Well, then that why did you? Why don't you provide punishment. us the explanation why you defunded oh, UNRWA? So, well, let's Just, find out. Core funding stopped in 2009, then full funding stopped in 2012. Why did it stop? Look, at, there, there, there's all sorts of reasons. We want to make sure that the Just money that we're providing one. is going to the maximum benefit of, of the refugee. We don't like seeing money being burnt up in administration. We don't want to see money being misappropriated and How used do you know for that, things James? that teach things like jihadism. So we want oh, to make so sure... Oh, so they're supporting jihadism on well, is now. Is that your point? There, there, there's been talk, talk that well, if, if you talk look at their education... If you look at their education system in, in, in the Arab world, sometimes they, they, they have, have uh, delivery of programs that do, do not fit with Canadian values. So we're going to make sure that the wow. values that we have... Uh, 
uh, really? our, our delivery you, of the dollars. Got to remember, we're dealing with taxpayers' money here, Paul, and so we have to yeah, make sure and, that they're going to the maximum are benefit. Why we're spending a half a billion dollars on a bombing campaign in Syria, and we can't even afford to spend a couple you, of million to help the people in Yarmouk who right what? now we, we are can get support, Over who can get billion. support through UNRWA, who can get support through UNRWA, and this government, because it's there, ideologically so just determined UNRWA. to punish people because of their ideology, in this case, Not the Palestinians. Absolutely, you just you just declared it that somehow UNRWA is involved with jihadism. Well, James, at, give no, your no, head no, a what shake. What I'm saying is, if you look at the education system, well, you just said it. I have, didn't. I know, but that, that, you know, there, there's there's a number that, of different reasons why different organizations are defunded, and sometimes it's because James, they don't have the principles that, that, that you want. You don't know what you're talking about is the problem. Oh, UNRWA geez, is again, on. No, you're no yesterday again, I talked Paul, to normal, someone who's usual. no someone yesterday I talked to who had been on the ground in Yarmouk was telling me that the only plan right now to get food and support is through UNRWA. And the problem is that people aren't stepping up. No, there's why other can we fund, on why the can we fund a UNRWA. bombing campaign, but we can't fund people who are We're in desperate need Paul. right now? No, and you're Canadians not. Under, Canadians understand that. You can't have no. security with, 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 with uh, and, and, and delivery. There is ability to get, there is ability to help people, and, and they're not getting it. And you could, and you've turned your back on them while people are Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Let me bring in Joyce Murray. There has been, by the way, controversy in the past about UNRWA. In fact, in 2009, it was different. Hamas was protesting UNRWA because they were teaching a course about the Holocaust, UNRWA. And in fact, it was Hamas that was protesting yeah. and it was UNRWA that was defending. So uh, it, there has been caught on in a different way on that particular case. Joyce Murray, what's your view on okay, that? Okay, well, a couple of things, points I want to make, Evan. One is this really is more of a reminder that everything that this government does under Prime Minister Stephen Harper is political and it's about votes from certain groups. Not uh, secondly, they've taken, they've uh, reduced the funding for foreign aid substantially from 0.35% of GDP when they came into power down to 0.27% in order to be able to uh, fund, uh, I guess, uh, tax breaks for wealthy families. They've cut things uh, that, that they shouldn't. And uh, thirdly, we've been saying, uh, as the government move forward to deepen this war, to expand it into Syria. We've been saying that there are real risks uh, with a huge number of refugees in, in places like uh, Lebanon and Jordan, uh, in the refugee camps. It's real risk of destabilize, dest destabilizing the region further. And this is a prime example. Here we have a camp where people don't have enough money for a meal a day and of course they are going to be open to some other group that is potentially providing them with the the things their family need right. to survive and live I, I, so I should, I, we should be doing more on the humanitarian front and that 30 million dollars should be put back to the uh, relief and workers agency well, right I, away can I, can I, let me just jump in quickly on this on this dispute mr. Gunness who I just spoke to he was at the heart of a, of a very uh, Profound controversy during the last the the, the Gaza yep. uh, war, where Israel has they do deem UNRWA biased. They do say that he was providing caches of weapons to Hamas. There has been a lot of controversy about him. Mm -hmm. He's denied it. Yeah. But they have been. There's there's Evidence. a huge source of of controversy about that organization, and, and governments can choose to support it or not. What's your what's your take? Well, on I that? go by evidence. Look, Evan. I mean, there's controversy with you know what what happened this past summer in Gaza. Absolutely, there's controversy. And right now, the Gaza is still broken, and I don't see no, people no, rushing to help fix it. Contra no, contra UNRWA. And, and, I know. I know. Okay. I, I'm, okay. I'm just saying there was controversy. But what with with regards to what we're talking about right now is UNRWA is the game in town with Yarmouk to help people. And this government has uh, denied to fund UNRWA in the past and they're continuing down that path and it's having an effect on people. And right. the people who are at the receiving end of that aid aren't going to get it. We could be helping out, and we're not. That's the bottom line. Right. But to hear Mr. Bazan talk about so, and throw so, allegations around things he's heard or uh, uh, they might be doing, the fact is the work they're doing is helping people on the ground who are in peril. And at the same time, we're instead putting our eggs in the basket right. of a bombing uh, 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 so so There have been lots of controversy. But last word to you, Mr. Durreal, or, sorry, Mr. Bazan, real quick. So, so just, just to drive home the message, though, that, that, that you know, about humanitarian crisis and making sure we're there. This year, we just finished in, spending the most money in Canadian history on humanitarian aid. And uh, the budget went up 62% this year at the close of this fiscal uh, season. So, you know, we are putting the money out there. Canadian taxpayers have been extremely generous and will continue to 
support the crisis and everywhere we can. And Paul just made the, another great example of why uh, UNRWA ha is controversial over the, the school in, in, in Gaza and the cache of weapons that were found there. I didn't mention that, but anyhow, well, I have no idea what you're talking about, James. What are you talking about? <laughs> all right, all right. Listen. No, I'm serious. I have no idea what you're. Right, you guys was. were just talking about it. All right. No, I'm saying mind. that there's Never there's mind. problems that they need to be. Re Rebuilding in Gaza, and that should right, be helpful. I, 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 listen, we're going to have this. This, this is a, this. By the way, uh, the tragedy here is whatever side we're on. Uh, this situation in Yarmouk is going to continue. Yeah. We're going to continue to follow it closely, and we'll have uh, our MPs on to continue this a very important debate. James Bazanpal, Dewar, Joyce Murray, always good to have the three of you on. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you.